Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a first person shooter in Unity and welcome to episode 34. So in this episode we are going to create a new scene that is actually playable for ourselves rather than the usual UI screens that we have currently. So we'll probably build a, like a little cave with a door and we'll also look a little bit more into player prefs and if you remember a couple of tutorials ago we dealt with player prefs when we were taking some information from a JavaScript and placing it into a C Sharp script. So let's actually go to our first person controller and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move them outside of this barrier all the way over here because we're going to build a, a bit of a cave over here and that is going to lead to our new scene and creating a new scene is fun. It's easy and it's interesting because if you think about it logically we have already built everything we really need and we don't need to do it again so we can use this level we have here as a template and that's exactly what we'll do. So I'm just going to place our first person controller about here, press play and just check proximity is decent. So we're going to start, we should be able to look to our right and we'll build a quick cave here. So we already have rocks, don't we? We already have them in the game we need a door so let's go to our objects folder and let's bring in another door because this one here in fact do you know what there's no point we'll use this door i think this one will probably be acceptable so we have everything we need we don't need to import any more assets let's take a look at some rocks and basically you just build what you need to here so i'm going to go for a bit of a cave Placing these rocks here, make it a little bit bigger maybe, two by two by two. You know, I, I, you can be as elaborate as you like here. Our textures look like they've gone a little bit funny, so let's readjust them. Let's check everything is right. So let's take normal map. There we go. Look a bit shiny, but again, that's entirely up to you how you want yours to be. So where's my door? Bring door in, right here, increase in size, probably too big, that is a big, big door. So maybe 50 by 50 by 50, and I think I'm going to take away the frame. I don't really need the frame. And let's apply the textures. So materials, onto there, and onto, in fact, that'll do as it is. So now we have that, we can use this. So I'm going to rotate to about there. We'll imagine this is our cave entrance. Again, just build what you need to do here, guys. There's no set way of doing it. Man's going to look very crude for a cave, in all honesty. So there we are. We can pretty much just do that. A bit cheaty, maybe, but there we go. Uh, pull this rock out. So. Now we have a very simple door, which doesn't particularly look like a door. It's still quite huge, but we're going to use that as our entrance. I'm going to light the area a little bit. So game object, uh, light and point light. And yeah, that should do like that. Actually, I kind of like how dark it looks. It does look kind of cool like that. So let's turn off. In fact, let's search for light and let's turn off the directional light. And let's expand this light just to make it look a little bit cool. So range, maybe 25. Press play. Nice. OK, so now let's create a bit of a trigger for this door here. And we can use the same sort of principle as we used for the door when we had it over here and if we go to this door uh, we should actually have somewhere around it a trigger for it so if we scroll down our list here we should be able to find it somewhere let's try typing door or is it attached to the door itself it may be attached to the door itself i cannot quite remember guys I know, I know, I know there is one here. I have seen it. 
Uh, yes, so it's on the door itself. So we can use this creaky door open script as the base. We don't really need to type a new script out when we could just use this as a base, like I say. So let's go to this script, hold control, press D. So we've got the creaky door script and we're going to rename it to cave door. And let's open this up in Visual Studio. Like I said, we've already written this script partially, so we don't really need to rewrite the whole thing all over again. We can modify this script. Just a couple of things need changing here and there, but generally the script will work the same. So the idea is it's going to take us to a new scene. Uh, we do need uh, to use Unity Engine UI, but we'll also need using Unity Engine dot scene management. Reason being is because we're going to change the scene. Next, we need to change our public class name to cave door because we changed the name of the script. Void update, we can keep the distance, getting the player pref to get float the casting right there. On mouse over, let's change this text to say enter cave. So enter cave. And what I will do is I will put this script on the website if you have any problems. So this cave door script, it won't be the same as our original door script. This will be what I'm actually doing right here. So if you need to get it, it's on the website for free. Uh, yep, keep all this. Things we need to get rid of. We don't need to play an animation. We don't need to play a creak sound because we'll add in a different sound next episode. And action display dot set active false. And also, uh, what else do we need? That should be it really, shouldn't it? Yeah, that'll do. So I'm going to save that script. In fact, before I do, let's get rid of the audio source right there. And I don't think we need the door, do we? Because it isn't referenced anywhere else in the script. So we can get rid of that line. We don't need that variable. So save your script. Now, before we add this script to this cave door, what I would like to actually do is actually create that new scene. So we're going to save this scene as it is. And let's go back to our assets folder. And on level 001, right here, hold control, press D, and it will duplicate it. And it will rename it level 002. So let's double click level 002. Now, it looks exactly the same. Difference being is that it's a whole new scene. So whatever we change here isn't going to be relative to this scene here. An example of that, if we go into level 002, Let's delete this house here. Let's delete this door and let's delete this here. Now let's save that scene and head back to level 001. They're still there. So level 002 is a good way to base your level. So we've gone into a cave here. So what we could do is all the way over here, let's build a cave. So we can, like I say, use this whole terrain as the same base. So in that respect, we need to get rid of a few things on the canvas. Let's get rid of, uh, well, we need to keep the minimap, don't we? We need to keep the health, uh, pause menu. So we still need all of that, but let's get rid of our objectives for now. So we can see a difference when we move uh, from scene. So let's take that away and let's add in a light over here so we can see what we're doing. So light and point light. Let's have intensity as two and let's have the range as 50. Now it's a case of building a cave. So let's start by bringing that door that we have to enter over here. So let's take the door, which is this one right here. And let's bring it all the way over here. If I can actually grab hold of it. So this will be the door that we came in on, right? So on the other side of this, so we'll say this side, let's put some of those rocks to make it a bit more like a cave. So uh, objects, rocks and prefabs. And yeah, let's just put a couple of rocks there. I'm gonna put this probably 10. No, that's, that's just silly. <laughs> 10 that way maybe, and uh, 10 
that way. So it's kind of big. I'm not going to teach you how to make a cave, guys. I'm sure you guys know. So I'm just going to do this real quick. And control press D, duplicate. Let's take it this way. And let's make the top of the cave. Uh, five by five. It's pretty big, actually. <laughs> two by two by two. And rotate. That way. Raise it up. And probably rotate that way as well. So now it looks like we have somewhere that we have come in from. So you take your time to build that cave. There's no you know, set way of building a cave. It's entirely up to you how you want to do it. Uh, but essentially what I may do between now and the next episode is just quickly build up a cave rather than you know, spend too much time building a cave on camera. So we're going to use this now as our starting point for our player. So if we bring FPS controller all the way over here, like so, and place it as though it were coming through this door, i.e. like that, and rotate uh, by 90. So then if we press play, that's where we are. So this is how this scene is going to look when we come through the cave door. So now let's set that up. If we go to File, Build Settings, and then click on Add Open Scenes, we'll add it there. And we need to remember this is scene number six. So if we go back to our script, what we need to do is once we've entered the cave, so basically gone through all this, and we press the action button, we need to go Scene, Manager, Dot, Load, Scene, and in brackets, six, semicolon, and save. So now we need to head back to level 001, our main actual area. So if Unity stops thinking about things and actually does what I tell it, we can get there. Uh, so level 001, yes, we do want to save that scene. You'll see our cave has now disappeared. Let's go to our door. <clears throat> and on the other side of it, on p cube let's add in in fact do we have um i think we do have it on this one don't we so we need to make it roughly the same as this one so we need a box collider and the script so on p cube 2 on this door add component type in col and you'll come up with box collider and then drag and drop our script which is right here and it's cave door onto there and on there we need the action display which is in our canvas and it is if I can remember is it text is that the right one let's check on this one it is indeed text so that is our display text so we can drag and drop onto there save the scene and press play so let's go over enter cave and there we go we've entered the cave. So that is how we can switch between scenes. Now we are going to use some player prefs because this is going to take uh, not a massive amount of time, but what we need to do is we need to double check how much we're using in ammo. So for example, if we have, once it starts up, zero ammo, we need to transfer zero ammo into that level. And same applies for pretty much anything else. So if we go to our ammo objects, which are all the way over here. So let's take this one, for example. Here is the trigger. Now, what we'll need to do is go into the ammo SMG pickup. So we open that script up. Sometime today. There we go. So what we'll need to do is every time we fire, we'll need to store that as a player pref. And that can be done via global ammo. So we need to reference this. We need to make sure that this is the ammo, which it is. And we need to go to global ammo, which is right there. So I, it's not 
most ideal way of doing this, but because we've started with JavaScript, we're going to have to kind of not, you know, struggle with it, but we'll have it stored in a player pref. So player prefs dot set int and in brackets and quotes, we'll call this ammo level and we will actually have the value of it as, um, where should we have it? Current ammo. So uh, in quotes and then comma, current ammo, close bracket, semicolon. And I'm going to take that line of code and place it there and save. So what that will do is it will get our actual ammo right there. And all that needs to happen on the other scene is that we need to get that integer and set it. So on that basis, theoretically, you have to remember that because this is a global ammo, it would transfer anyway. However, saving it is wise because what I intend to happen is when we go through the door over here, we're going to start auto saving, which means if we quit the game, we will lose our ammo count, but we've got it stored here. So we're going to use the player pref to actually be able to auto save and that's coming in the next episode. So next time what we'll do is I think we'll have a phase out uh, as we go through into the cave. Uh, we'll have some sound effects on the door and I think it's probably wise to stop the player going into the cave without a gun because he's going to need that gun. And we'll also uh, basically have auto save working just in um, the ammo level for now. So guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.